this product is kind of a game changer for me. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Arts That Play, and today I want to talk a little bit about the Holbein Melts Colored Pencil Blender and how this product can be used to kind of speed up your colored pencil work and create a watercolor-like underpainting to, you know, kind of get into the grooves of that paper and cover up some of that white and make it quicker for you to get to the fun part of colored pencil drawing. And I just want to say this video is not sponsored by Holbein. They have sent me some of this product in the past. However, I have bought some more of my own and I discovered some cool tricks while I was trying it and I thought it would be fun to share those tricks with you. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so I want to do a few test swatches to kind of show you the difference between doing this with melts and doing this with odorless mineral spirits. In here, I have some of the Gamsol odorless mineral spirits. This is how I typically blend my colored pencils, or how I did before I tried the melts for the first time. And I like to keep it in a water brush. I don't like to have open containers of odorless mineral spirits in the studio because they do have harmful vapors. Even though you can't smell them, it's still giving off harmful vapors that you shouldn't be breathing in. And so I like to have this in a closed container. But the melts, there's no warnings about harmful vapors on the back or anything like that. It does have the AP stamp of approval. So this is saying that if there was any of that, it would mention it. All, the only things that it has for warnings is obviously not to get it in your eyes and not to eat it because you shouldn't be like drinking or eating art supplies anyway. Okay, so I have the Caran d'Ache palette here. I love this palette because it has a nice rough side and a smooth side. And the rough side is made for their Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s, which are water soluble pastels or crayons. But I love using this for ink tents and I love using this now for this little technique <laughs> and but you don't have to have this you can color on any type of surface that has like if you have some sanded paper or anything like that anything that it's not gonna like soak up any water when you go to lift it any type of palette you can just scribble on and lift I just like this because it gives a nice rough surface so it makes it easier for pigment to fall off the pencils okay so first thing that I want to do is I'm gonna do just want to show you the difference between what you do with OMS and, and with the melts. Now, you can use melts with different pencils. This one's a Blick Studio that I have laying around because I haven't put my pencils away yet since my last colored pencil video where I talk about all the different pencils. Um, so, I'm going to do the Odorless Mineral Spirits first. Kind of squeeze out a little bit. And you see it breaks down the pencil great and you can paint it on the paper but it's very dark and it doesn't spread very very far because odorless mineral spirits it will evaporate pretty fast however it stains the paper and that's why this looks so dark and it's not a very smooth blend doing it this way odorless mineral spirit uh, spirits notoriously when you're blending with them with colored pencil, you really need to have a lot of layers down on the paper first. And so that's why we're kind of getting that blotchy, not blending very well. And as you can see here, it soaks through the paper. I did a few tests earlier, but this soaks through the paper a little differently. And this is just some um, Strathmore 400 series mixed media paper. I'm not using very expensive paper for this test. Now I'm going to put some of the melts in and just to be transparent, the first time I tried melts, Holbein had sent them to me with some colored pencils for me to try. And since then I have bought my own because I like the melts so much. Eventually I probably will put this in a water brush as well. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Let me actually grab a dry brush. So as you can see, it's not breaking down necessarily as quickly. And it's not going to be as dark. But look how much smoother that is. And it doesn't sink into the paper the same way. So definitely layers are going to be key. 
And I probably used a little bit more liquid than I needed to here. But it spreads pretty far. Pretty smooth, very watercolor-like. Let me try it with a little bit less. A little bit less of the solution. So you can get it darker with less of the solution. And then maybe even add some solution to it if you want to. And I just think that this is more desirable, at least for what I'm looking for, than this. That just seemed too blotchy. And then obviously I, I want to use this technique as an underlayer for my colored pencils just to kind of help take away that white of the paper and speed up the process and... Obviously, this is blotchy. That's going to make things harder to blend in the long run. So, like, I don't want to have to have something that's not a nice smooth blend underneath. We want to help ourselves out and not make it worse. But this goes a lot further. And you can dry brush. I'm sure that it's possible to do splatter effects, which... It would probably be possible to do splatter effects with odorless mineral spirits as well, but where you shouldn't be breathing them in, you don't want to be splattering these vapors all through your studio. So I wouldn't recommend doing splatter effects with odorless mineral spirits. But this is a water-based fluid. It even says, it says aqueous on here. And again, there's no warnings about vapor on the back and there would have to be with this seal there they would have to warn us because that is saying that if there was something like that they would warn us there's nothing like that on the back and so I'm, I was very excited when I tried this for the first time because I feel I already feel a little bit safer using it now that being said you don't want to go too wild with it. It, it just like any substance again you don't want to get it in your eyes you don't want to eat in the studio you don't want to be like cleaning your paint brushes off in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> like the masters used to do, but it's a little bit safer than having to worry about breathing in these harmful vapors. Okay, so now I want to try just a quick little project because I want to show you how colored pencil layers over this. This is a little bit stained, but I'm going to be switching to my watercolor paper. And as you can see, it kind of dries a little bit lighter too, similar to watercolor. But again, we're looking for a base here. And look, see how this has stained all the way through still? This is the OMS. This right here is where I use the melts. And so it's not seeping through the paper either. Definitely, definitely very exciting. And there's still some tooth to the paper. It's not filling it as much as it would if we had put a full layer of just plain colored pencil down and then blended it out after. So I have a little pear drawn out here and I'm just going to choose some random colors to do. And I have a bunch of different colored pencils here. These are some of the Prismacolor Premier, just to show you that they work with different colors. And The other thing that we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to mix on the palette. So here is a polychromos pencil. And this one is an actual Holbein pencil. And it does say on the back that not all brands will necessarily be able to be blended with that. But so far, I haven't found a brand that can't be blended with the melts as far as the brands that I use. So I think they have to put that on there just in case there is that obscure brand out there. Uh, here's a Light Fast by Derwent. And a Caran d'Ache Luminance. So let me get my... And of course you want to clean your brushes in between. I have a thing of water here where I've been rinsing my brushes. I want to do this as a base. So this is the Prismacolor and it is melting the Prismacolor. I just kind of want to have this be kind of a base color. 
And I don't think I have enough pigment there. Again, this isn't going to be perfect. I am using this as under layers and then I'm coming back on top with detail after. Let me see if our luminance will break down. Maybe this one will be one that doesn't. It doesn't look like it picks up the luminance. So that's the first one that I've come across, the first brand I've come across that it doesn't seem to pick up. And I can tell you, this doesn't really work with um, what is it that I, uh, it doesn't work with the Neo Color ones. I've tried it with Neo Color ones. So it doesn't seem to like Karen, uh, Karen Dosh very much, but I think that it seems to work better with oil based pencils so far. So we'll get that out of the way. This is the first time I've tried using this with a bunch of different pencils. Because I've really, I work with my Light Fast and my Polychromos the most. And obviously I've worked with the Holbein a lot when it comes to using this particular product because this came with some Holbein pencils. So I haven't had the chance to really experiment too much with the different brands to see. So that this is actually kind of a big experiment for me too. So that's why just a minute ago I was like, I haven't found a brand yet that it doesn't mix. Well, now I have because it does not like the luminance. That being said, you could still use the luminance on top because we're just doing base layers here. And I'm going to let it dry in between before I come in with my pencils. But it's nice to have a quick layer. Because look how much quicker that is than if I had just come in and done only colored pencil. Now I want to see which red pencil is that? My Light Fast. Now I've used Light Fast with this before, so Light Fast does blend out. And Derwent Light Fast is an oil based pencil. So, I mean, the Prismacolor did blend out. But I'm thinking that this likes oil-based pencils better than wax-based pencils at this point. A little bit of red in here because, you know, it's a pair. Pairs will have red. And I don't have a reference for this. I am kind of just going from my imagination and memory as far as color and everything else goes. And even as far as shading goes. That's crazy that that yellow didn't work at all. Let's see how a Koe Noor works. Should work fine because the Blick worked fine. Yeah, Koe Noor works great. Kind of add that to it. And it's nice because it can give you that kind of painterly effect. So if you're somebody who loves colored pencil but also likes to paint or likes a painterly effect, this is a great kind of project for that. Put some more red down. I'm also not surprised that I had no idea that these would blend out luminance because I never use my luminance pencils. But everything else it seems to blend out. Like I said, it didn't want to really... Like, it didn't give me too many issues with my Prismacolor, even though those, those are wax-based. And even after it's a little bit dry, I think you can blend it out a little bit. And I'm using the Fluid 100 watercolor paper for this. Kind of using these transparent layers to just build up my values and my colors. I want a nice orangey yellow. So 
So I am going to actually mix some colors here. I have a Blick and a Prismacolor here. Mixing it right on the palette. There we go. And more yellow. So it does take a second with the Blick, but it still does end up picking it up. Whereas this, it didn't even like move the Caran d'Ache. So something about Caran d'Ache products, because like I said, it doesn't like to move the Neo Color ones either. I'm still trying to find something that's a substitute for um, for OMS for my Neo Color ones because I'm trying to get away from things that are slowly poisoning me <laughs> as far as art supplies go. Um, I think any time that you can be safe you should try to be safe and I've used OMS for years and I love odorless mineral spirits I love them for so many things for oil painting for my colored pencil for wax pastels they they really work so well but I just as I get older I want to be a more conscious of safety and so I'm trying to find substitutes. And because odorless mineral spirits have been so, what's the word, versatile for me, it's been difficult for me to find something that I can fully replace it with because I can use it across so many different mediums and all the things that I find don't go across mediums. Like this one, works great for colored pencil but not necessarily for like obviously I'm not going to use it with oil paint um it doesn't work like I said for wax pastels as well so it doesn't seem to really work for oil pastels as well uh so I really am wanting to find something that works as a replacement but I'm very happy that I can at least use this for colored pencil. And when I was first reviewing their 12 sets of colored pencils, that's when I discovered that I could use these, this to create a watercolor-like effect in a different way than I was ever able to with the odorless mineral spirits. And that just kind of changed, that changed my world, folks. <laughs> oh, I already have some of this nice dark color over here. Let's... But this is the first time I've actually done it in like a piece like or as a video where I'm trying to really get the most out of this effect. I did it in the video where I discovered it, but that video was really about the pencils themselves that set itself and not so much about this technique. So I thought it was time to show you guys this technique because I thought you'd be able to find it helpful as well. Because like I said, I was ecstatic. Okay. Now I want to use, I have a stylus here. I want to imprint the paper to get some detail. Maybe here like that. Again, I don't really have a, a reference for this. This is out of my memory and imagination. Just from doing these things before. And I have to kind of dry brush it over that, I think. Because obviously liquid will be able to get into those grooves.
Now, I kind of want to see once it's dry how easy it will be to correct anything. And I, because I tried it a little bit in the projects that I've done before, but yeah, so see the liquid gets into those grooves. However, this is a lighter layer. Hopefully those grooves will stay put so that when I come over it with pencil, those lighter lines will be there underneath because this is going to get darker once I come in with pencil, obviously. And I want to smooth this edge. The fun thing about this is that while we get some watercolor effects, we're not necessarily getting the watercolor blooms. So, like going back into it, at least so far, I haven't seen that. Now, obviously, when I come in with my pencils, I'll be able to clean up the edges a lot better. I'm over here coloring outside of the lines or painting outside of the lines, as it were. Actually, I can have that be the start of the shadow, I think. Let's see if I can lift. Maybe not. This isn't going to be perfect, but now I want to create. And I don't feel like I'm using a ton of pencil this way either. I feel like I'm getting more bang for my buck. I should cover my paper but I'm not because this is an experiment she's gonna be painterly that's all that's all there is to it I'm not really doing that properly all right I can find a way <clears throat> okay. that's not normally how I would do my splatters but you know what I'm just winging it right now all right now I'm going to pause this and let this dry because I don't have a hair dryer with me right now and I will come back when it's dry and I'll go in with my layers of pencil Actually, you know what? I am going to lay a shadow in below. Kind of a brown, green shadow. Kind of a mix of all the colors that are in the pair. So as you can tell, it's very faint, but that is just a great like underlayer, I think. And I do kind of like the splatters around it. I'm not really trying to like create any sort of masterpiece here, but it is kind of fun to have some splatters around it. So maybe I'll incorporate that in a little bit in a more purposeful way. It's almost dry, but I decided I wanted to add some more spots here. So I'm just coming back in with a little bit of brown and my brush. And of course I can do this with pencils too. Okay, so I think it's dry enough now. So I'm going to come in and do what my layers and really pump up that saturation with these pencils and look how much quicker and easier that is because I already have a lot of the tooth of the paper filled and it kind of acts as a glaze because these are transparent colored pencils are transparent so it's kind of mixing optically with the colors below which is really nice
I think my paper is still a little damp in some places, so it's not giving me the saturation that I would like. But we're getting there. Actually, I want... I'm going to bring some purple in here. Very, very light layers. Look how that like glazes over that and adds that pop of saturation. Yeah, and I'm kind of being mess messier with my strokes than I normally would be because I'm not as concerned with filling that tooth. And I'm using multiple different brands, as you can see. Right in here, there's still a little damp spot. So it's kind of not being as friendly with me as other spots are. I don't know why that spot stayed damper than other spots, but... Then for the highlights, I can kind of blur out the edges a little bit. With my white. And with something like this, you really need just very few colors because you can mix on your palette too. I mean, you can mix with just doing colored pencils the traditional way too, but. And now it's getting darker and darker and more saturated. As my paper gets drier and drier, because it was a little bit damper than I would have liked when I came back in. And it was a little bit damper than I realized. Otherwise, I probably would have waited longer. But it's still working. I'm going to clean up these edges a little bit. A little bit more of this green over here, I think.
Now let's see. I apologize. The piece of furniture I'm sitting on is squeaky as hell and it's super annoying. Don't come at me in the comments because there's no way you're more annoyed about it than I am. I need new furniture. But I spend too much money on art supplies, so I can't afford it. <laughs> I laugh, but there's a little bit of truth to that, I'm sure. And I did come back in and re-indent while I was paused. I did come back in with my stylus and indent some more so that I could have more of that look in the veins. A little bit of this color. And why the heck not warm it up a little? Um, a little darker here. Now, gonna have more layers down. get some reflected light over here and if I need to come back in and blend more And actually, you know what? I didn't even check Darwin drawing. I want to see if this melts down easily too. Yep. Kind of blend out those new layers. And once there's more layers on there, it's more saturated when I blend it out than it is if I just paint it on. Especially once the paper is fully dry, you can just continue to layer until you have the desired saturation and the desired effect that you're looking for. But this just made things so much quicker for me. And I kind of want to see if I do this, will it show up white after? Some little white dots. And it still kind of keeps that watercolor look. And I I don't know. I like that. It's just like this nice, soft, sketchy slash painterly look. The combination is just really pretty. And I think a lot can be done with it. Now I want to see if erasing is a possibility. It looks like slightly, 
but it kind of blends things a little bit. So that's nice too. Looks like the top layers, especially where it's mostly just plain colored pencil are erasable really easily. But where we watered it down, not as erasable. And it has lightened a little bit after blending it out. So I'm just going back in and adding a little bit more saturation. here I'm not a fan of okay now I want to add splatters to the whole thing because I think that'll be fun these ones aren't showing up very well The only thing that sucks about splatters is they're really hard to control. So for the ones I don't want very dark, I'm going to try to lift up a little. And kind of erase with my white. That leaf probably should have been bigger too, but you know what? I'm pretty proud considering I didn't have a reference. Okay, so I think that I'm going to call this done because this was just a fun little exercise. What do you think? Would you ever try this technique? Because I had a lot of fun with it. And like I said, I've tried it before, but nothing to this extent. And I think it's going to be a really useful trick to help speed up a colored pencil drawing and just kind of help things with the under layers. Instead of pulling in something like watercolor or something like that, you can just do it all with colored pencil. I had a lot of fun with this. All right, so thank you so much for watching. And let me know in the comments below if you would consider trying this. And if you have any other tricks that you like to do to do an underpainting for colored pencil, let us all know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Have a great day. Bye.